If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. Our first step is to note that these two resistors, as well as these two resistors, are in parallel with one another. And we know that when resistors are in parallel, the following equation would hold in order to calculate the equivalent resistance. And we'll have to perform this calculation using this equation two times, once for each pair of parallel resistors. So let's begin with the first pair and use the 12 ohms for R1 and the 6 ohms for R2. We could add together the terms on the right hand side. And then we haven't yet solved for REQ, so what we can do is actually invert both sides of this equation. And when we do that, we can see that we would have REQ over 1, which is just REQ, of course. And that's going to equal 4 over 1, which is just 4. So the equivalent resistance for these two resistors is going to be 4 ohms. We'll perform a similar procedure for this pair of resistors. So we've plugged in 4 ohms for R1 and then 8 ohms for R2. We'll add together the terms on the right-hand side once again. And when we do that, we get 3 eighths. And then once again, we have to flip around both sides of this equation. And when we do that, we can see that this pair of resistors has an equivalent resistance equal to 8 thirds ohms. Now, once we find the equivalent resistance for each pair, what we want to do is redraw the circuit, but we'll combine these two resistors into a single resistor, and then the same thing with these two resistors. So now we have these three resistors, and in this case, these are arranged in a series combination, and we know that with series resistors, the equivalent resistance is simply the sum of the individual resistances. So if we use R1, R2, and R3, we can plug in four ohms for each of those values, and we'll be able to get the equivalent resistance of these three resistors. And when we do that, we get 35 over 3 ohms. And if you need a decimal form, you could just punch that into your calculators, and you would get approximately 11.7 ohms. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. And before we move on to part B, we're going to go ahead and take these three resistors and combine them into a single equivalent resistor whose resistance is 35 thirds ohms. So now part B tells us that a voltage of 35 volts is supplied between, or applied between the two points. And we know from Ohm's law that whenever we have a potential difference, we could set that equal to a current multiplied by the resistance. So what we're going to do for this very simplified circuit, the one that contains a single resistor, is we're going to determine the total current that's flowing through that single equivalent resistor. So let's divide both sides of this equation by the resistance R. And then once we've isolated the current I, we can go ahead and plug in the potential difference of 35 volts and the resistance of 35 thirds ohms. And when we perform that calculation, we get exactly 3 amps. And that's going to represent the amount of current that's flowing through this single resistor. And we can go ahead and mark that in the diagram as well as up here as being 3 amps. Now what we're going to do next is move our way backwards through the circuit until we return to the original arrangement of resistors. And there's a couple of rules that we have to keep in mind. When we move backwards to a series circuit, we're going to bring with us the current I. And we'll explain what that means in just a moment. However, if we move backwards to a parallel arrangement of resistors, we're going to bring the potential difference, or the volts, if you prefer. So as we move backwards from this single resistor to these three resistors here, we're going to see that we have a series arrangement of resistors. And because it's a series arrangement, we're going to bring with us the current. So let's take this 3 amps, and we will write it above each of the resistors. Again, we're bringing the current, not the volts, because we're moving backwards to a series arrangement of resistors. The volts, however, can be calculated because, once again, we know that delta V is equal to current times resistance. So for each of these resistors, we'll take the current and multiply it by the resistance to get the volts. So for example, in the first case, 3 times 4 gives us 12 volts. 3 times 5 gives us 15 volts. And then 3 times 8 thirds gives us 8 volts. We are now prepared to move backwards. And notice that when we move backwards from this resistor to where it had come from, Recall that it came from condensing these two resistors. We can see that we're moving backwards to parallel. Well, in the case of moving backwards to parallel, we're going to bring with us the volts. So let's take the 12 volts that we had just calculated and place it on this resistor as well as on this resistor. Similarly, this resistor, when we move backwards, also returns to a parallel arrangement of resistors. So we're going to bring with us the 8 volts, and we're going to place that 
on this resistor here as well as this resistor here. You'll notice that for the middle resistor it's not changing as we move backwards. It's simply moving back to its original form. So that means we can actually take with us the 15 volts as well as the 3 amps. So we'll do 15 volts there and then 3 amps here. And since we're actually looking for the current in each resistor, this becomes one of our answers, so we can circle it. Now, for the other four resistors, we don't yet have the current, but once again, from Ohm's law, we can figure out the current. Remember, if we divide both sides of this equation by the resistance R, we can see that the current I is equaling the potential difference of the volts divided by the resistance. So all we have to do is take the volts and divide it by the resistance. So for example, 8 divided by 4 is going to be 2 amps. And then over here, we have the number of volts 8 divided by the resistance 8, and so we get 1 amp worth of current there. 12 over here divided by 12 is 1 amp, and then 12 divided by 6 is 2 amps. So we have the final answers for the currents through all the resistors, and they're circled and labeled in the purple color.